Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and focus on fit, getting the pant to fit well, as well as change it, the fit um, to your aesthetic as well. So to get started on that, a um, couple things. I think we should actually add fusible to the waistband and give it um, an inside facing as well. So go ahead and select your waistband and in the property editor, you can scroll down and you're gonna look for um, under fabric, oh, right below fabric, it has bond uh, skive. Um, you're gonna click that and turn the bond on. And then there's some preset defaults. We're just gonna do fusible common. You can see there's other choices as well and see how that goes. So that's good. Then we're also gonna select them and we're gonna go ahead and say layer clone under. Okay, cool. So they will be sewn together already if I turn on my little sewing tools um, so they know just make another layer. So that's pretty simple. Um, the next thing I wanna do is actually put on denim fabric instead of this simulation one. So if you open up library, Clo does have denim fabric already available for you. It should be under D. For some reason, mine's not showing up. I have no idea why. It's really weird because when I go in my folders, I saw it there. Um, if you're having that issue and you don't see the denim fabric, um, I'll show you what to do next. But if you do see it, you should be able to just click drag, make sure your fabric tab is open, click drag and drop it on fabric one. And that should change the fabric. Um, I was having an issue, so I went to this tab. You should, if you have an account with Clo, um, it's a free to make. You can actually look for free fabrics right here and just download them directly. Um, I've had good luck with that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know if it's my spotty internet, who knows? Um, but if you click this little link, it actually takes you to their store. Make a free account, um, go over to the store, and then you can search up fabric here, um, type in denim and uncheck paid, leave free checked. And here you go, Clo has actually three types of denim that they provide for you. They have a stretch one, they have just raw, and then a lightweight one. So I downloaded the raw one. I put it in my downloads folder because I feel like something weird's happening with my fabric folder right now. And, um, and then I went to Clo and let's see here. I'm um, going back to a little star tab. If you hit this plus button, you can add a folder that's on your computer. So that's what I did. I chose downloads and I made a fabric, a new fabric one. Um, so uh, this will be the third time I'm doing it. So I'll just say open. And then when I scroll down, there's the shortcut to those files. So I actually don't need it there three times. So I can delete two of them. Um, okay, so anyways, if I double click that, it's a shortcut. There's the fabric that I freshly downloaded from the store. Another little trick too is if you click it um, in the store, and this is fine, you can actually get a lot more fabrics too, so maybe it's a good tip to know. Um, if mine says to download right now, maybe that's because I've already downloaded it. If it doesn't say that in yours, you just click add to cart, add to cart, you go to your cart, um, and then you check this little box that you agree to their terms of service. And then I just click PayPal and then it downloads it right away. It doesn't ask me for my PayPal account or anything like that if it's free. So don't worry about having to like type in a credit card or anything like that. You won't have to. Um, okay, so I got my fabric. I'm gonna click drag and drop it on fabric here, fabric number one. There's my denim raw fabric. Okay, cool. You might be wondering, hey, why is yours still white? It's because right now I had my setting changed to just the monochromatic surface. I can actually change it like this. Um, you might also be asking why is it kind of orange and brown? That's because I applied that fusible fabric as well. So I'm gonna go back and change my fabric view to just be the monochrome surface. I think it's easier to see how it's fitting. And then before I simulate, I'm actually gonna adjust my waistband a little bit more. I know when we first drafted this, um, the fit was a little bit off. It was a little bit large on the particular male fit model I chose. Um, 
If you had the same issue, go ahead and make your fit model bigger. I think that's an easy way to go. We can later resize the fit model to any size we want, and then we can actually auto grade the pattern to match it. So right now we just want to focus on getting a good fit. It doesn't really matter which size it, the good fit is on as long as we have a good fit. So, um, Okay, so I'm gonna leave my fit model as is, but I'm gonna try to figure out the size of his waist of where I want the pants. And I kind of like them a little bit below the belly button. You might like them high waist, you might like them low waist, you can totally decide that yourself. So I'm gonna measure his actual body. And this is hard because I have kind of a teeny computer um, laptop here. My screen's not that big. So I had to go in and look for it. It's some measuring tape, here it is. And I can click and hold and we have some options. So I can surface, circumference, measure the avatar. I do get a little clumsy with this. I believe you click once and then I'm gonna hold shift and click. And I, oh dang it, I went up. I'm gonna say edit undo. Okay, click once, hold shift, click. And I feel like that's it, I'm done. Okay, it worked. It kind of goes all over the place. So you have to be kind of delicate with it. So it looks like that measurement of where I want the placement, it's 36.771 inches. Um, so I think I wanna make my waistband just a little teenier. Um, so 36.75 I think will be great. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my selection tool, Z's the keyboard shortcut. I'm just gonna see how long is it right now. So I'm gonna hold shift and grab both of them. And it looks like together, oh, they're not adding it together for me. I need them to add it, hello. Hmm, okay. Uh huh. Hmm, what if I do it like that, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so anyways, two of those lines is uh, 36.721. Wow, that's actually really good. Let's see here, what is this again? This is 36, I think I wanted 36.75. So if I want, I can make it a little bit bigger, but actually I think I'm okay with a little bit smaller. I'd rather go smaller for now. Uh, we'll see, I can always change my mind later. So, but if I was gonna make it bigger, let's maybe just go ahead and make it bigger just for the demonstration is, um, okay, so I want to make it 36.75, and right now I'm at, I see if I click the other one, it's not telling me the measurements, so I can add it on my phone, you know, with the calculator, but this is kind of a little hack, um, just selecting the top. So it looks like 36.72, oh, is one bigger than the other? No, I want to be 36.75, oh gosh. Um, that's hardly anything. So anyways, I could take this guy and right click and I can offset my pattern outline. I guess I think it was like 0.03 was the difference. I should really write this down. Um, extend, you get a preview, say okay. And it made it a little bit longer. Um, okay. The other thing is though, we need to make sure that this is this will be able to sew into the waistband. So if you drastically change the length of the waistband, you also need to change the length of the waist pieces as well. Um, so another way to do that. So let's see, where am I at right now? It says 36.361, hold shift. Oh, 36.72, mm, it's not bigger. Let me try making it 0.03 again. Let's see if that'll work. So I'm gonna select you, right click, pattern, offset pattern outline. Yeah, 0 0.03, extend, okay. Let's see if that made it bigger. Okay, select this and hold. Huh, oh, I know why. Okay, because it only measures where the segment points are. Got it, so now it's gonna be too big. So I will say edit undo, edit undo, edit undo, there we go. And what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna delete that point. I don't know which one it is. Oh, that's the wrong one. I'll just hit delete. Scroll down here. We don't need the one on the bottom either. Get rid of that guy. Cool. So now when I select it, it measures the whole length. And we're at 36.78. So, ooch, I made it a little bit too big. How did that happen? Hmm. Um, oh, because it's I forgot that there's a, the two of them. That's right. Okay, so I'm trying to get 0.5, so maybe I'll bring it in, just 0.1. I mean, so you, we could offset it again. 
offset pattern outline. This time we would retract to make it in a little bit smaller. Um, I guess I'll do 0 0.015. Okay, let's see how that goes. It didn't add any extra point they have to worry about. Okay, 36.72. I'm just gonna go with, it's so small and minute, it's fine. Okay, so now if I select this and hold shift, um, am I also gonna get, uh, shoot, this one's gonna be harder. This is now, it looks like it's, those two together are 20 inches, so that's a lot bigger than 37 inches, right? That's about, um, cause 20 plus 20 is 40 inches. That's about three inches. So I should probably bring both of these in a total of three inches if I'm doing my math, right? Um, so how should I bring it in? Should I bring it in on the front piece or the back piece? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the, where the side seam is right now. The side seam kind of looks like it's a little bit forward. So that makes me want to take in the back more than the front. I can turn on schematic view to really see where that is. And I can hit the keyboard shortcut four to get them lined up um, properly. Does that work? Where's my, there he is. Hey. Um, so, I mean, it does seem like it's a little bit more forward. It could be scooted back. It's not really that. Maybe I just take, you know, some from both. I feel like it's a little bit more forward, but not drastically. So I'm going to X this out. Um, okay. And I want to take, um, I think an inch and a half off total. Okay. So let's see. So this one, let's see how much do I have here? This is 10. What if I take this down to 10? I'm going to select it, change length, just change it to 10 that knocked off about, I think an inch and a half cause there's two. Okay. So it took it out of, I'm going to say edit undo. Let's do this again. Change length. You have a choice. Here it took it out of the back rise, but maybe we wanna take it out of the side seam. I'm not really sure. Maybe in this case, I'll do both actually. Okay. Okay, if I hold shift and add these up. Uh, okay, it's still kind of, I'm gonna take some out of this as well. Change length. Maybe I'll just bring this down to nine. And do both. Okay, hold this guy up. Um, I think I'm gonna try to get a little bit more out, change length. Let's try 8.5. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll just take out the side seam this time so that the rise stays kind of straight up and down. Change length, and then same on this guy. I'll take it down to 10 inches and I'll do it out of the end. Say okay. Hold shift. Okay, we're at 18.5, which is 37 inches. What is this again? Um, okay, so it's a little bit bigger. It's only by 0.3 inches bigger, so I can try to play around with it to get it exactly right. But I think for now, I'm gonna move on. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, oh my gosh, another thing I just realized. Are these all changing too? Are they all the same? Yes, okay, good. Okay, um, so now when I simulate um, a couple things. First, I wanna make sure the waistband is visually where I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that. I think I liked the placement about right there. And then I'm also gonna change um, the simulation to fitting, accurate fabric. Okay, so now I will hit space bar. Well, even before I hit space bar, um, I might actually take these pant pieces, hold shift, and um, bring them up a little bit to match so they don't like pull the waistband down too heavily. Okay, I'm gonna hit space bar so it simulates. See how that goes. Okay, I think it's fitting his waist nice because it's not pulling down or hiking, so that's good. Um, and another thing I wanna introduce you to are the fit maps. So. Um, it's the garment fit map. So I'm gonna hit spacebar real quick to get out of simulation mode. And then this one fit map over here on the very end has these blue dots. So this can visually show you exactly where the fabric hits the body here. Um, 
and then where it's not that's just kind of blousey and then over here you can leave that one on and then you could play around with the other three um let's see i love when i hover over it it tells you its name but i don't think that's happening today for some reason there we go tell me your name fit map yeah this is a good one it'll tell you if it's like unwearable that because it's too tight so that's interesting to know like what's going on down here why is it unwearable right there so it says it's a little bit too tight so good to know too tight yellow is also tight but wearable so the fact that i have red and yellow is not good i'm gonna have to fix that and make that a little bit more loose um let's see if i hover over this guy this is a strain map tells you how much it's pulling. It's weird that it says it's unwearable, but then it's not red. Usually it would be red where it's unwearable. So I'll have to go back in and see what the heck's going on there. And then the last one is a stress map, um, like how much your fabric is stretching and whatnot. So I would say probably the most important one is this one. See if it's wearable or not. Oh, it went away. Remember my red spots? They went away. That's weird. So weird. Oh no, here they are. Duh. There they are, okay. We'll play around and come back and check in on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off for now. Okay, I'm gonna turn my fabric back to just white. Okay, I think what I wanna start with, it's definitely too long, so I'm gonna start there and make it short. So I'm gonna hit the letter Z, I'm gonna click the bottom hem, holding shift. I'm gonna bring it up about three inches. I can see the number on the right-hand side, see how it changes. Looks at 3.2, maybe I'll try that. And then I'm gonna hit space bar to simulate, let the fabric drape a bit. Okay, that seems better. Um, cool. Okay, ooh, so we have some really bad bagginess here. You really wanna, as you do a fitting, you wanna look for these drape lines. And then I like to kind of play around, like how can I get rid of it? And I usually kind of pick up the fabric. And so when I pick it up, they go away. So that means there's too much fabric here. So what I might try to do is, you know, is take out that extra fabric. But how do you take out extra fabric where that blue dot is, right? Um, so the trick is, is to go from the top and I'm gonna lower it a little bit. You can kind of see, it looks like I'm doing an inch and a half about, okay? And then do you see that? I basically took out fabric by making that lower. Now there's a space there and you can see the sewing stitches as well and so when i simulate those little threads will pull tight and it's going to pull the fabric up just kind of like how how i was pulling it up with my hand the only thing i need to worry about though is that this side seam needs to be the same length as the other side seam so i might want to do the same thing i do see draping in the front too so i might actually bring that down a little bit as well okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to change these two points I'm gonna convert them to a curve point instead of deleting them so that the shape doesn't change. And that way when I select, I can see the whole length. So this is 38.2 and this is 38.4. So I think I'm gonna change this one to 38.4. Right click, change length, 38.4. Um, I don't wanna change it at the hem, I wanna change it up at the waist. So I'll change the direction to end and say, okay. Okay, good. Um, okay, so let's see if when it simulates, if it helps a little bit with some of the bagginess by pulling up the fabric. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so what else can I do to fix it? Kind of just got to play around and figure this. Obviously something not great with the rise and maybe that's because it's too tight. We sort of saw that earlier. Um, so what if I actually, I know I was bringing this in, maybe I just brought it in too much. So I think I'll bring it back out to give it a little bit more fabric. And that's gonna mess up my sewing with the waistband, but I can go back and fix that later. Okay, so that gives it a little bit more fabric there. I was just worried because it was too tight. Did I give it too much? I'm gonna say edit undo. I'm gonna do just like, zoom in like half an inch. There we go. And it's space bar. Yeah, that did kind of release it a little bit. Um, so it's like, hmm. Yeah, what if I, uh, I don't want to take it in too much at the leg, but here, let's go in here. Maybe I can actually recurve this line. I'm going to hit the letter C. Maybe I'll just bring this in a little bit. And that'll make it a little tighter around the thigh. Okay. And so that should hopefully pull the fabric a bit. 
yeah, that did help a lot. Um, cool. This is a decent fit. I'm pretty happy with it, but you can also redesign it to the way you like it. Like maybe you actually want to do some skinny legs. Go ahead and change the pattern to be skinny. Um, all that good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna, oh, I am in simulation. Cool, and once you're done, just go ahead and save your file and then we're gonna move on to the next part of the project.